about diagnostics? Well, there are about 11 things that you need to know to effectively uh, solve problems in lagoons. And um, the first thing is, is the lagoon properly sized for the community industry or load. I mean, how many times have you guys had it where somebody wants to put a, an industry in, a jail in, a prison in, a, uh, or put in um, a, a subdivision or that sort of thing? And what happens is, is that can your pond handle the load? How do you know? What are the pond dimensions and depths? Uh, what is the theoretical retention time? The actual retention time, how do you know? What is the flow? I mean, if you don't have a flow meter on your pond or you can't calculate based on uh, lift station pump run times, you know, you really have to know the, know the flow. How much sludge is accumulated uh, at the bottom of the pond? Critical to know, especially if you, your pond's like 20, 25, 30 years old. Got to know that because that's going to be feeding algae, causing BOD and fecal problems. Um, what are the dissolved oxygen uh, concentrations measured at different times during the day, at different uh, 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 strata throughout the pond? What is the pH at different depths, different locations? Because it will change because the biology changes. And because the biology changes, the chemistry changes. What are the BOD and CBOD out of, uh, into and out of each individual pond? Uh, why is that important? I mean, most everybody just measures BOD coming in and then going out the effluent. Why is it important to know what's happening after pond two, or pond three, or pond four in a multi-cell system? Why is it important to know that? Well, it's important because one pond invariably is causing the problems. Uh, seriously, it, it's usually one pond is for whatever reason, Mother Nature's decided that one pond is going to be causing the problems. And many times your permit will read that you're allowed to discharge from another pond. A common strat a, a strategy is during the summertime, in a three-celled system, discharge from cell number two because cell number three is going to grow algae. And because it's growing algae, your BOD is going to go up. So a real common strategy is to, to discharge in, or during the wintertime after the, the third cell and the summertime after the second. Solids control. You know, anything floating on the top of that lagoon is potentially suspended solids, like, like grease and trash and everything like that. There's a situation where they try to put a, a you know, a baffle in here and you can still see that this garbage is getting in there, but anything that's floating on the surface, popping, rising out, uh, the sludge, that sort of thing, everything is potentially suspended solids. Not only that, here they're growing crap in here. We talked about uh, basically uh, algae concentrations and water quality changes with, with increasing or decreasing depth. We've seen these charts before. I, I stood there while taking this picture, waiting for that glob of goo to make it over there and finally got it. But it, really, anything coming off the surface here is going to wind up uh, as an effluent suspended solids. Same situation here. It's pulling all that trash in, and that's all. Another way to control algae is if you could influence the retention time by adding baffles or designing a lagoon system with two day, two day, two day, like we saw in that retrofit at Cochrane, California. Here's the uh, sludge depth profile. Some places the, the, the sludge depth is about 11, 12 feet deep, but averaging about 5.34 feet. In 2002, when I first sludge judged it, it was an average of 4.42 feet of sludge. Uh, it, it sludge accumulates in this pond about 1.92 inches per year. You're going to see why that's important. There's been a 21.5% increase in sludge blanket thickness from 2002 to 2008. <laughs> average. And so basically what we did is said, you know, the sludge is accumulating right down the middle. You can see it. It's, you know, the edges are pretty clear, not accumulating so much, but right down the middle it's all accumulating. You can see here on the edges about 14% increase more, but right down the middle 41. The story here though, they started out back in 1970 with 86 million gallons of capacity. To, as of 2008 in June, they're down to 51,000 uh, gallons, 51 million gallons of capacity. One million gallons of capacity is being lost every year. That's 33 million gallons of capacity is lost due to sludge and about 40% uh, lost treatment capacity. That equals about 4.7 days of retention time. That's significant in these ponds because why is retention time so important? It's important to kill pathogens and to stabilize ammonia and to reduce VOD. This is important. Solids concentrations change with changing depths. Whenever I sludge judge a lagoon, and you, you probably noticed this too, that that sludge at the very bottom is really super thick. 
and that in the middle it's a little lighter and at the top it's real wispy. <coughs> well, down here in this one, I took some core samples there from Lone Butte, and the bottom was about average about 7.1, 5.6, and 2.02. This is important, and I'll show you why. Um, so we're pulling these, these core samples out. Well, what happens is, is that, that if you've got a dredge in there, a dredge can't go all the way to the bottom, okay? Why, why don't you want your dredge going all the way to the bottom? Yeah, your liner, you'll tear your liner up, you'll tear your auger up on your, on your dredge. You wind up missing a lot of stuff, okay? But what happens is, is that you went out and, or you hired a guy like me to come out to take these core samples, you know, and to, to do an analysis. And I took a, the whole core sample here because that's what you have to do. And basically said, well, you've got so many tons of, of sludge. Well, if you're only pulling off the upper portion there, you're not pulling it all out. You're paying more than what you're really getting. Okay, if that makes sense. Let's go ahead with ammonia removal and nitrogen removal. Um, among researchers, there's a real difference of opinion about how uh, ammonia is removed from uh, lagoon systems. Well, we do know a lot of it's volatilized out when that uh, pH changes, algae eat up a lot, bacteria do under nitrification. Well, there are six nitrogen removal pathways according to uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Middlebrooks. Algae eat it, bacteria eat it. A lot of it settles out. A lot of it is volatilized or stripped when the pH is high. Nitrification, which is uh, basically the conversion of ammonia to nitrate. Denitrification, which is the conversion of nitrate to nitrogen gas. And then a lot of it goes out with the effluent. Um, there are 11 key factors that determine the rate of nitrogen removal.